Hi, David. Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. Thank you, Daniel. Yeah, it's great, great to be to here. Have, yeah, it's great to have you here all the way from Arizona. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what's the weather like over there today? Um, it's actually a little cloudy and windy and cold today, but yesterday was really, was really nice. It was like high 20s, sunny, um, like a pretty good spring Arizona day, but today is not that great. But So hopefully tomorrow is going to be a lot better. Yeah, you're lucky heading into summer. Melbourne's already yeah. hit, hit winter already. It's freezing here today, <laughs> absolutely. A typical yeah. Mel Melbourne grey old day. <laughs> so how does an Aussie guy from Melbourne find himself at ASU? Tell us the road that you took to get there. Um, well, initially I was kind of getting reached out by some schools um, when I was still in high school about coming to college and stuff. Uh, hadn't really given it much thought, but um, I decided just to kind of go with it and just kind of see what kind of available. I wasn't really like taking it too seriously or thinking about it too seriously. I was just talking to different schools and seeing like what what's out there really. Um, and then I got, and then it started getting a lot more serious. Um, I like took a, um, like a trip out to America to like visit a few schools. Um, and then I eventually chose University of Arizona to go to initially. Um, and I went there for three semesters and then I transferred to, to ASU, um, and yeah, that's pretty much how I ended up at ASU, really. What what made you transfer across? Um, I think just the direction I thought the the program was going in. I um like a lot of I, don't know, I just thought that um I needed somewhere a bit more competitive to train at. Um, so that was that was like a big factor for me. Um, and then I already knew like a couple of people at, at ASU and I was speaking to them initially as well in the, in my recruiting process. Um, and I really liked the school then. Um, and they'd gotten a lot better, um, between that while that time I was at, uh, U of A. So, and it was really close by, I really enjoyed the Arizona weather. So that was like a big thing where I was thinking about, um, and then obviously, you know, having Bob and stuff like that. And then Leon was coming in that year, kind of like before he became like Leon, everyone knows now, but he, like he was still fast before then. So there was like a a big pull then. And then, and then yeah, and then now it's kind of the ASU that is really going amazing at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Is that is that why you're listed as a red shirt junior? Because you transferred universities? No, so I did a semester. So I did my first semester at U of A, and then I redshirted for the Olympics. So I came back home and swam back in Australia for a year. So that's why I'm pretty sure. Right. So will that will go off your? So you'll finish being a redshirt at the end of this semester, and then just no, that's off. like that's like a. It's kind of just like a title, like because I took a year off, so it's just like. <sighs> Okay. I'm like older than like the normal, like I'm one year older than like the normal class of people. Right. Okay. I get it. It's yeah. very confusing for Australians. I think the whole US college system. So it's good to have you explain it. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it is confusing. But then like once you're around it, it gets quite simple. But I remember going through it all. Like I was, had no idea about anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so was it easy to swap your academic across from... Um, University of Arizona to ASU? Um, I kind of changed my, my, my major because um, so I'm doing construction management at the moment and that's what I wanted to do like the whole time, but they didn't offer that at U of A. So I was just doing, I was doing uh, civil engineering there. And then so then I, when I came here, I, I changed it to uh, construction management. So there was like a little bit of like losing a few credits um or like classes that I've done like don't really count towards my degree so I kind of like fell a bit behind but like it's all good now but um yeah it wasn't too too much of an issue really yeah well, that's good 
And what's this past week been like since the success the team had at the um, NCAAs? How's that felt That's, around campus? Yeah, it's great. I mean, um, around campus, I'm not sure really how like the broader uh, college like feels about like the normal student base, but um, I know the swim team were all like super pumped. And when we got to the airport, some security guard um, he came up and talked to me and like he was obviously following it. So that was like really cool because uh, generally you like come back and obviously because we're not one of the biggest sports, like you don't really think that too many people are going to be fine. But that was cool that like some from the public just like kind of congratulated us like straight away. Um, and yeah, it's just a massive achievement for our program um, since we got cut like 15 years ago. So we've really been able to bring it back from like no program to now getting second. So yeah, it's been amazing really. Um, I don't know. It was something I thought, like, after my first couple of years in college, I kind of, like, thought, like, oh, like, watching other teams, like, you, like, win and stuff like that. Um, and we were coming, like, fit, like 12th or 14th and stuff like that. So I kind of, like, thought, like, oh, like, that's never really going to, like, happen in, like, my college, like, time or whatever. And I was, like, fine, just coming, you know, like, in the teens and stuff like that. So it's been really cool to, like, see that to – to be able to like where that's like now my team yeah and me too so that's been really good and fun and yeah it's, it's it's cool how quickly things can change really i mean you all look i mean in the photos i've seen you all look like a really tight group of um guys on the team obviously your training and we'll talk about that in a moment is on another level but what what makes you such a close team do you do a lot of sort of team activities outside of the pool together yeah um i mean like a lot of people like we all not everyone on the team but like there's like certain sections like we're all living together um so all the freshmen like live together and then because they're all in the dorms and then there's like different houses and people are still in different like apartments and stuff like that so everyone's kind of spending a lot of time with each other and then yeah most weekends we're doing stuff together or um I don't know, we just got, I think we all just really vibe really well as a group. There's like no, there's like no beef between anyone or like everyone's just like really meshed and we're really close mates. Um, and we all actually really want to see the best and for each other and see everyone else like have success. Um, so yeah, it's, I, I would say it's a really, really good group. Yeah, it looks exciting. It really does. And on a personal level, you won the consolation final of the 400 IM. Talk us through yeah. that race because that, congratulations, that's amazing. Yeah, that's great. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was cool. Like, it was a little disappointing in that heats, like missing out on the A final. I knew I had to go fast. And then after the, the swim, I don't know, I was just like, and like watching my splits, I was just like, I know I could be faster than, than that. But um, I don't know, just like once I'm, like whenever I'm in the B final, my like goal is to try and like win just because I know how badly like like the points vary in like the B final. You can get you get one for coming last or like nine for for first. So was, my goal is to always at least try, try and win it or like get as close to winning as I can. So uh, going to the race, I had a pretty, I think I was pretty like relaxed mindset. Like I wasn't really feeling like scared or like nervous that you might be before like a 4 a.m. Like I was pretty confident and, and focused, I'd say, like pretty focused on just like what I had to do um, and just taking my focuses on each kind of leg, like as they came, just really concentrating on that. And then, um, yeah, and then just really getting to the freestyle and just trying to get my hand on the wall first, which I just did, which was, which was good. <laughs> Was that a, a PB for you? Yeah, that, I did like a, I think I was about like a second and a half PB, That's so great. that was really good. Yeah. And am I right in saying that that was, that would have got you about seventh in the, in the A final? If I was faster. in and I did that, I think I would have got fifth. fifth. So, oh, well. Yeah. Well yeah. Thank you. That's great. So when you, when you talk about um, each hundred 
that you look at are you sort of what are you thinking to yourself in like starting off with butterfly are you doing stroke count you're thinking about your stroke Um, this meet, I was kind of thinking about my pressure in my underwater kicks and just counting those out. I was just doing five of each wall. Um, and just, yeah, I was using that to kind of set up my swim because I think in a couple of my previous races, like I haven't really had enough. I've like kind of got away on my pressure in my underwater kicks. So I was kind of focusing to maintain that. Um, And then just trying to keep set, uh, like throwing my hands forward at the front of my right, uh, front of my stroke for a fly. And then backstroke, um, I got to make sure I kind of do as much underwater as I can because that's my weakest stroke. So, kind of the least amount of backstroke swimming I can get away with is the best <laughs> for me. Um, and then I got to, I'm just focusing on trying to keep my rate up in backstroke um, and make sure, yeah, my like catch, trying to catch as much water as I can. And then breaststroke, um, I was trying to rate up a lot more because I kind of get stuck sometimes in yards, being able to like get enough stroke, getting getting a high enough stroke count each lap because um, sometimes I fall into like doing five and then I can't kind of like get, get reaching the new the ne that next gear because I'm like I'm kind of stuck with the amount of strokes again. So I was trying to push that a bit. Um, which I was able to do really well. And then freestyle was more just um, being stronger in the first 50 because um, that helps me set up my second one a lot better. Um, I think I did all that like pretty well. So um, I was quite happy with that. Yeah. And, and what do you think you can improve on from that race, um, that sort of information that you've got now for your next 400 IM? Mm, um, just looking at the times, that my splits I was doing, I definitely know I can go out fa faster in my fly. So that's something I should, something I'm going to try and work on. Um, could be maybe keeping my rate a bit higher in fly. Um, and then I think definitely like my freestyle and, and brushstroke, I think, I mean, all of them I think I can go a bit faster in, but um I haven't really given it too much thought yet, but I just know definitely I can drop some time in the butterfly, I think. Yeah. And I know, obviously, with the um, NCAAs finishing last week, training is going to be a bit different now, but take us back to sort of two months before um, last week and what was the training week looking like then? Um, two months. So... It was it wasn't like the hardest training that we we do, but it's still like quite hard. Um, we're doing nine sessions in the pool and three in the gym. Um, we go double Monday, single Tuesday with gym as well, and then double Wednesday, Thursday is the same as Tuesday. Double Friday and then Saturday morning with gym. Um, Monday is kind of just a general uh, Monday morning is kind of just like a general wake up a bit of a bit of aerobic stuff um well, actually no two months ago we would have been doing power work so we're in like the back pool um connected to the buckets um doing vertical kick um I'm not sure if we were doing like assisted cords yet or not but um towards the end we had them doing fins and paddles work, some pool stuff, just focusing on our main stroke and making sure that we are working our power. And then Wednesday afternoon, I go with this, I've been going with the sprint group and I've been doing some breaststroke work, um, kind of like 200 breaststroke work. Um, and then Tuesday back with Bob's group and it would be some kind of IM or backstroke or breaststroke type variation of a set that'd be long course and that's generally pretty hard wednesday morning could be it it varies a little bit week to week but it's probably more like a recovery morning but still quite high volume so it could be like a six or seven k just keep going through it until you're done um wednesday night would be main stroke speed type work so it could be 
I'm not sure what we were quite doing like two week, two months ago, but um, like it could be to send hundreds brushstroke or fifties brushstroke like that. Uh, we had some set where it was like three fifties on thirty five, like best average, and then we had I think two seventy fives are easy maybe on a minute something, and that was three rounds or four rounds of that, and that was suited so kind of doing kind of sets like that, like where we're under fatigue and trying to keep our race stroke together. Thursday would be, could either be, that could be a recovery session if we didn't have a Wednesday as a recovery session, or again, that would be some kind of I am ish type of set long course. Friday morning is power again. It's the same as Monday morning. Um, Friday afternoon would be, is normally pretty relaxed, but, um, pretty kind of basic, just doing kick and pull and swimming. Like it kind of varies week to week and so that. And then Saturday is generally just a, a typical Saturday for everyone, really, and that's normally long course. Yeah, well, it's it's great that you can move the pools between yards and short and long course. And and do you do yeah. um, short course meters at all, or is it all in yards and long course? Um, we've done one short course meters practice the time in this entire time I've been here, but that's, that's just because we had a triathlon meet and they swim in short meters. So that's why, but we normally just go yards and then long course. Yeah. Wow. Do you, what do you prefer? Um, I mean, I prefer to train in yards and race in yards, but um, <laughs> if I could pick which one I'd be better at, it would probably be long course. Yeah. It just, it always seems just so far, doesn't it? Long course. <laughs> Yes, I know. <laughs> so Especially I know, once we've done yards for so long. Exactly, exactly. I know you just mentioned Bob. What's it like training under Bob Bowman? Yeah, it's really good. I mean, he, I don't know, it just, he, it's, you just, I feel like you get a lot of confidence training under him just because he's so confident in what he's doing and so knowledgeable and just, you know, I remember last year he would tell us to do these sets and people who might ask, like, oh, like, why like this, whatever. He's like, well, I've done this 100 times and you go fast, like, if you do this set, so, like, go do that set. So there's, like, stuff like that where, I don't know, he just, he's so, I don't know, like, kind of the word to describe it, just so, I would say just confident in, like, he just knows, like, what to do and he knows exactly, like, and he knows that it's going to work as well. So I feel like that's a different aspect to than a few of the other coaches I've worked with. They might be like, oh, like, uh, we'll do this and hopefully, like, this works in the end or they might give off that kind of vibe about it. But, yeah, not with him. It's just complete confidence, which you just, I just come in and just I don't even have to really think about, um, like, if it's going to work or stuff like that. I just go in and just do the set, really. And I just know that it's going to be good in the end. Is he always on pool deck working with different athletes on the team or does he oversee other coaches? Um, he works, we're all split up in different groups. Um, so there's a D group um, and then there's like a male sprint group. That's with Kirby. And then um, Rachel and Derek take mainly all the females and that's like sprint and more of a mid-distance group. And then Bob, he takes the, uh, like I am mid dis uh, I am like two fly, two back, two-ish free, five free type um, guys. So he really met, and then a lot of the pros as well um, work with Bob unless they're like sprinters, like Ryan Held, he's always with Herbie. Um so Bob really works a lot with us mainly. And then um, I know he helps. I see him like helping Logan out, who's the distance group um, coach a bit. I'm not sure exactly like if he's talking a lot to Rachel and Derek, but I'm sure he will be. Um, and then I don't think he's really like telling Herbie what to do <laughs> with his practices because Herbie's kind of got his own um, – way of doing it which is working a lot but I know they both work together in terms of how much maybe we should be tapering before a meet and 
figuring all that kind of stuff out. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's such a legend in the sport. What what do you think you've I know you said he's very confident, but what, what have you taken away from his coaching that you find the most valuable? Um I would yeah, I would say like if I was to go on coaching and I was to like kind of mimic or like if I was to put something that he does like into my training, I'll probably say um, probably doing like a really, really hard set like every now and then just to kind of help people mentally then wrap their heads around sets that are, are hard, but like they're not the hardest sets like ever or like they're or like if you wrap your head around like a 4am which is like obviously a really hard race but knowing that you've done a lot of the training a, a lot of harder you've done harder stuff like before that I think that's a really big thing that's kind of helped me yeah absolutely I mean it must be amazing for you surrounded by all these amazing athletes Leon had a, a fantastic NCAAs himself and is a great IM swimmer. It must be wonderful for you training alongside him. Yeah, it is. I mean, I'm not often really right up next to him. Uh, I'm normally <laughs> a few body lengths back. So, um, yeah, just seeing someone like that is is really amazing. And it's kind of, I don't know, it's kind of just almost like jaw-dropping in a sense to, like, see someone, like, that good at <laughs> something that I would think that I'm quite good at as well. And then just seeing someone who's like literally on like a level I can't even like comprehend. <laughs> but we've got a lot of other really, really good swimmers in the group. So I'm always like getting pushed if I'm having like a good day and I'm like closer up there with Leon and a few of the other pros or if I'm not having the greatest day, it's probably someone else who's not having a good day. And we're kind of like, in the same kind of spot so there's always somewhere and i kind of like flow between all of that yeah. uh, throughout the yeah. week so it's it's kind of good like that yeah. we've got a lot of people there how many pros do you, you have in the program um in just in out of like everyone like even spring group and stuff like that yeah yeah across the whole men's program um we have chase jay reagan Haley, simone um olivia ryan we have seven. Oh, and xanus we have eight at the moment i think wow so that's that's yeah. getting into a, a pretty big group now isn't it yeah and i've got a feeling that there's probably going to be a few more i know i think grand is going to end up because he's done with college now he's i'm assuming he's going to be pro um and another guy max mccusley he's going to go pro as well so there's, there'll be at least 10 from the people who are already training here. Right. And that doesn't count if other people maybe want to come as well. Yeah, for sure. So now the NCAAs are finished, what does training look like for you now? So what happens? And are you coming back to Australia for the world titles um, trials? Yeah, I'm coming back for that in June. Um, in terms of like training, it's pretty much the same as we were doing before NCs really like oh, in the whole season not much really changes in terms of that much sorry it's just a little bit more long course bait uh focus I guess so doing we'll be doing more of our quality sessions long course rather than doing them yards um just to get that practice in and then we'll be going there's a group of us that's going to go to the Olympic Training Center in May which is at altitude and then off the back of that um, my plan is then to come back to Melbourne and do trials. Yeah. So when you when you come back here, I know you used to swim with MLC Aquatic, but who yeah. would you who would you train with when you come back? Um, I've been working with Craig uh, Jackson at Melbourne Vic Centre a lot over the, the past summer. I was doing a couple of sessions at MLC, and then I was I think I was doing like three sessions at MLC or two sessions. And then I was doing all the rest with Craig, um, just getting, yeah, I've been working with doing that because I guess I had the hub um, and 
there's not too many other places really to train where there's people my age um, anymore. I know. <laughs> so, I know. <laughs> so yeah, so that's what I, that's what I did last summer, and um, and then I was working with Craig in the lead up to World Short Course, and during that meet too. So then, um, so yeah, my plan is just to kind of continue doing that. Yeah, I kind of feel like um, a lot of the pro swimming in Melbourne has been desecrated because everyone's moved to Queensland. So there's not uh, there's not much left down here at the moment. I suppose it's in a build up phase again. Yeah, I know. So hopefully we can build up a couple more swimmers to get it kind of alive again. Yeah, for sure. I know. MSAC are not really coming to the party with um, training. You know, they've sort of knocked out Vic Centre and... Yeah, I'm not really too too involved anymore because I'm so yeah. I'm so far away. So I just kind of yeah come back and things Jumping. just change every time I come back. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Talking about the worlds in Melbourne before Christmas, you had a um a great a great swim in the final of the 400 IM. How was yeah. that racing in front of your family and friends? Yeah, that was really good. Um, that was definitely probably my career highlight, I think at the moment. Um, and that's definitely something that I've like, cause I've made world short course before and I didn't make it back. Um, and I just remember coming off that meet being like, Oh, like it was like cool that I made like the team. And like, I was so pumped like to do that. Like that was a massive um, tick for like things I want to do. And then when I was at the meet, I remember just kind of feeling almost like, you know, like I was like there and I made the team and I like swam, but like I didn't make it back to the final. So I kind of felt like I wasn't really like swimming it. Like, I don't know, like I didn't really like really like swim the meet, I guess, in a sense, even though I was, so this, this time around, it was like a massive goal for me just to make it back. Um, especially I know there was a lot of people coming that Saturday night to come watch me. So, um, I wanted to make sure that, um, I was actually swimming, so they, <laughs> like actually see me. So that was really good that I was able to get that time. Um, so yeah, I was really proud that I was able to do that. Yeah, it was a good race, and I thought your breaststroke leg was so so strong um, in that race. How did you feel about those um, four legs of the medley? Yeah, um, my morning swim was definitely a lot stronger. Um, I just remember in the fly, I had Matt Sates and. Uh, I forget the Italian guy next to me, both just like way out in front and butterfly. <laughs> so I remember in that, I was just thinking, I was like, oh, this is going to be a long race. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, there was definitely a lot of things I think I could have done better. I mean, it wasn't really like a bad swim per se. Uh, it's not like, yeah, I swam terrible. Um, but yeah, I was just more really happy that I was just able to, be in the race to be honest um and that i was able to at least beat one of the guys in the race <laughs> so i was quite kind of happy after that <laughs> did you find it hard swimming the finals at night when it was so cold outside because it was a pretty cold week that week in melbourne um not did really i mean we we've, we've done a lot of i've done states um when it's been cold sometimes like during then as well so um i feel like i've done a, a few meets like age group wise where it's been quite chilly uh, and I, don't know, I mean it's really like if you just keep all your clothes on until right before you on the blocks then you're not really gonna feel the cold too much yeah yeah for sure and did the team sort of gel together for that meet the Australian team they look like they're all pretty tight yeah I think so I think definitely as the meet kind of went on um and we had a bit few more like shared experiences because obviously the uh like the training training like the staging camp wasn't as long as um a couple of the other teams this year um, i think as kind of the meet went along we all kind of bonded a lot more so yeah i thought we we're a really good group yeah yeah you look like you're all having lots of fun yeah it was definitely fun yeah for sure and will you stay on at asu for your senior year yeah, so I've got one year left um, and, yeah, so I'd finish that off and then uh, head back home. Yeah. So you, won't, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't stay on and, and train with the pro group? 
Um, that's not my plan at the moment. I think just it's a little bit harder to stay on than just like wanting to stay on, um, like having to get like work visas and um, different kind of logistical stuff with like the government. Um, so, so yeah, I probably I've been away from home for a while, so I think it's kind of kind of feeling like it's almost like time just to come back. <laughs> yeah, I understand. <laughs> yeah. But those those pro swimmers on the team, do they they have to if they're from overseas, they have to work there, do they, to get a work visa uh, in some way? I'm not. Ex I think so. I'm not. Yeah. I think there's only one guy who at the moment isn't like a US pro. Um, I'm not exactly sure what his visa is, but yeah. um, I know that yeah, normally you have to you have to work in some kind of capacity or have someone sponsoring your work visa. Yeah. Um, to be able to stay. Yeah. I just wanted to ask you a little bit about the work that you do in the gym. Um, do yeah. You, you have, you have a, obviously probably a, a strength and conditioning coach attached to ASU. Mm -hmm. Is it all strength work in the gym or do you do Pilates? Um, do you do stuff on the Watt bike? How does that all work? Um, it's mainly just, um, normal kind of gym strength stuff. Um, yeah. I know back home we do a, a bit more like kind of Pilates, mm. uh, like involved and things like that. But here it's mainly just kind of working through like different lifts and um, the actual just strength side of it really. Yep. Do you enjoy working out in the gym or would you rather be in the pool? Um, I do enjoy working out in the gym, but it does make me very tired <laughs> and yeah, sore I know. I know. when I'm in the pool. So um, I think once I've quit swimming i'll probably try a bit more in the gym but i think at the moment i kind of just try and get through it without uh <laughs> making myself too tired so i'm not wrecked when i when i jump in the water jump in the water yeah what what are your sort of tips for recovery in between your sessions what do you do um sleep really and just <laughs> chill <laughs> like um <laughs> conserve as much energy as possible really um trainings here is pretty hard and um we do a lot of volume so i think recovery is probably something i need to try and actually improve a little bit because <laughs> this semester has probably been my like most inconsistent like block of good training that i've done i'd say so i think that's actually probably an area that i can try and do something a bit better at yeah, it's hard though when you're studying as well. Yeah, trying to work it, work school around that. Um, like trying to maybe like time meals or like bring meals with you. Like sometimes like I have to like leave right off the like I swim and then do gym and then have to like go straight to my class. That will go for like an hour and a half. So it's like got to try and I'll have to like bring food. So then like while I'm walking to class, I try and like eat my lunch so that it's like not too long before I'm eating and. Then sometimes I'm, I have like class until like six o'clock. So it's kind of like draining, like having a, like a really long day and then having class like till the end of quite late to then like come home and then have enough energy to like want to cook dinner <laughs> and <laughs> do all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. That living at home, you don't really have to think about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I know. Well, that's, yeah, that's a good thing of living at home, isn't it? Someone yeah. else is cook cooking all your meals for you. I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, everyone that comes on the podcast, I do a, a little deep dive five questions for them. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to ask you your favourite breaststroke drill. My favourite breaststroke drill? Um, one that I've kind of done a lot is just breaststroke with butterfly kick, but I feel like that's probably not the greatest <laughs> pressure um, drill. I normally did that just to shape, uh, to save my shins, really. But I would say um, there's a drill we do with Bob. It's like a single, single, like a single arm pull while you do your normal, and then you do a double, and then you like again with a single. I think that's really good for uh, getting feel for the cash. So that's, that's another one that I really like. I think it's probably a bit more uh, 
useful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Wait, are you kicking at the same time as doing that or are you going to pull boy in? No, yeah, just doing normal normal oh. breaststroke, but like not using one arm and just alternating yeah. that. Yeah. What's your favourite competition pool? Oh, um, wow, well, that's a good one. Um, I would, I don't know, I really like uh, SOPAC and Adelaide. I think they're two really good pools. Um, obviously, the outdoor MSAC pool, I've done a lot of racing it, had a lot of success there, so that's that's good, but the outside of it's probably not good all year round. So I'd probably say, yeah, SOPAC or Adelaide. Yeah. Okay. Both nice pools. Yeah. What's your What's your favorite pre race meal? Um, I normally just have like a banana and a juicy bar, to be honest. Um, yeah. Before like every practice and like each time I'm racing, so that's probably my my go to. Yeah. Do you sort of um load up on protein after you've trained? Um. I don't know. I don't really think too much about like um, I need so this much amount of carbs or this much amount of protein. Um, like in the gym, there's a uh, like we have like protein recovery shake or like milk drinks or something like that like we'll go and get. But it's not really something that's in the forefront of my mind after finishing training or just eating something. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. <laughs> What's your favorite exercise in the gym? Um, I would say probably cleans or bench press. Nice. What What do you bench press? My best ever is two eighty pounds. So, oh, what's that in kilos? I, let, me, let me get that up. That's 127. Wow. That's good. Well done. Yeah, it, yeah, I haven't <laughs> done it for a very long time. So, yeah, but so at the moment, I'd say my current probably favourite would be clean just because that's what we do a lot of here. And yeah. that's always fun. Yeah. And what's your favourite individual medley training set? Um... Oh, I should maybe I should say favorite. What's what's the hardest one you've ever done? <laughs> the hardest one, um, gosh, um, well, there's a lot of a lot of hard ones. <laughs> Probably there's this um, Bob calls it the Janet Evans set. It's like it goes like a hundred easy on on like a short rest interval, maybe like one twenty or something. And then it goes four, 200 IMs, um, maybe on three minutes and their descend. And then it goes 200 on 240, uh, easy. And then three, 200 IM on maybe either five or 10 seconds faster interval. And those are descend one, three, but you have to start faster than the fourth one of, on the previous. And then it's a 300 easy and then you have two, two IMs. And then three, uh, and then four hundred easy, and then two hundred iron max, um, and those intervals keep getting down faster and faster, and you have to keep getting faster. So that's that. That was a tough one. Um, anything where there's like a lot of butterfly is hard. <laughs> like if you're doing hundreds <laughs> butterfly long course, that's quite hard. Um, I'd say my favorite ones is it'd be probably like eight fifties. One of each, uh, two of each on, um, let's say, like 50 or a minute. Um, that's what we'll probably do more so, like in taper. Uh, and that's always fun to kind of just rip that. Are they max? Um, yeah, they'd either be max or they might be like 400 iron pace, something like that. Um, I always like doing broken, suited stuff like in taper. Like a four hundred iron, like broken. I really like those kind of sets. Yeah, they sound good. Well, David, thank you so much for joining us on the podcast today. It's been lovely connecting with you and hearing all about your experience at ASU, and wishing you the best of luck for the world titles trials coming up.
Ishia. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, take care. All right, bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.